whenever you're doing a messy job, if at all possible, do it outside. Like blowing grass clippings off a mower, you don't want to have to clean up that mess in your shop. So, but tonight it's getting dark. It's going to be getting into the evening, so I have to do this job inside. But I did do the blowing off outside. But to prevent those grass from sliding, I just put a piece of two by six in front of each of them, and then put it in front of a fairly immovable object, and uh, the butted against there, and I was able to drive up just fine. Now I'm going to proceed to grease these two machines and. I'm not going to insult your intelligence uh, thing that you don't know how to grease something, so I'm not even going to show you that. But I will show you. Once you get to the point where you're buying more than just the, the basic tools, if you have any equipment at all that has grease fittings, get yourself a powered grease uh, gun. These come in both electric, uh, you know, battery powered units and uh, air powered. I'm not a big fan of battery powered tools, so I got the air powered, but. They're right around 150 bucks. Lincoln is a brand name, so it's a pretty decent tool. I mean, I remember when I was a kid, the only people that had powered grease guns uh, were gas stations and service stations, and always made me kind of jealous. And uh, one other thing, uh, use rags, towels. When you're doing a job that isn't that messy, but they're no longer a uh, new towel when you're done using them, save those suckers. So when you do something really messy, like a grease job, it'll cut down your use of uh, paper towels or rags in half. Uh, wiping off the fittings before and after you grease them, it is a messy job, and you're gonna use a lot of paper towels or rags. So you might as well use used ones for that. All right, I just got done greasing these two machines. Uh, interesting note, uh, the Skag that has 17 grease fittings on it. The John Deere only has eight. Um, you can take what you want from that. Uh, if you don't like to maintain the machines, something like John Deere is probably better. But if you stay on top of things, uh, the more grease fittings, the better. Uh, this mower right here is probably made in the mid 80s at the very latest, and it, it's still going strong. So you take care of something that will last, even if you don't aren't the kind of person that washes and waxes something every time you turn around. Um, I'm gonna have to get new belts, I'm gonna have to. Bite the bullet and buy some belts. I see some cracks in them. I've been neglecting them for a while. Uh, here's another tip. I, I get my parts for these mowers from Mill Supply. I say avoid buying OEM at all costs. You, you'll find these belts online from the suppliers are 50% of the OEM price. And uh, geez, 30 years of using these things. I haven't seen any difference in quality between OEM and a good quality aftermarket supplier or belts or anything else for that matter. All right, we're going to sharpen the blades on this machine. They're actually not too bad. I might just let them go. I don't think those are too bad. I'm just going to let them go. I'm just going to check to see. If the mower spindles are in good shape, if the blades wobble, we'll look at the other blades too. <clears throat> they don't wobble all the spindles are rock solid. The edge of them is pretty damn good. Let me check the last one. All right, let's look at the thing here. Oh yeah, that, that still feels sharp to the touch. We'll just check to see if the spindles are good. And in this machine, they're rock solid, so we're going to call everything good underneath here, save us a little bit of time. I'm not going to sharpen the blades because I don't think they're any worse than a machine that's been out for one cutting. I don't use this machine very much. I usually use the zero turn rider and the hydro, but uh, it is a backup and that is exactly what it's going to do. It's going to be playing backup here for at least the next couple of weeks. As long as I was talking about spindles, I'm going to show you what a bad one looks like uh, if I can here. That one actually isn't too bad. Let me see the center one. That one's not too bad either. I rebuilt these last year, but there is movement in this one. Yeah. Yeah, here we go. I don't know. Let's see if I can get this so you can see it. You see how that moves back and forth? That spindle's junk. So all three of these need to be replaced on this machine. I've rebuilt them so many times it's housing's worn out. It's time for new. Oh yeah, one other thing here. 
when you just try to decide whether you buy an air wrench or not, you know, a lot of people think, well, it's for doing those really hard to get at bolts. It's got more grunt than you might have with your arm. It's not just that. On something like a mower blade, you put a regular wrench on there, it's just going to spin and you'll have to block it up, which is just fine, but sometimes you'll run out of hand. Especially if you're trying to video it. With an air wrench, you don't need to block it or anything. It's a wheel nut or anything. It's just a wheel turning, the blade turning, the bolt just comes right out. Ah! It's kind of handy. All right, we're going to talk about sharpening mower blades. Thing, as far as blade uh, balances are concerned, uh, it's just darn hard to beat a uh, nail pounded in the wall. Uh, you just hang your blade on there and sharpen the end that's heavier, get it so it's uh, sitting level. And It's hard to beat a nail pounded in the wall. You don't always have to spend money. No one's ever going to accuse me of being safety, Sam, but this is one job where you probably want to wear some safety equipment. Uh, definitely, definitely safety glasses when uh, ever you're doing anything that involves making grinding sparks, flying metal objects, uh, wear safety glasses. Uh, you're going to want to wear a dust mask for this. It's nasty. You've got grinding uh, wheel dust. You've got metal dust. And also, you're going to want to wear a long sleeve shirt because your arms will get covered with with crap uh, and you might even want to wear earplugs because uh, it's fairly loud I'll give you an idea of what I'm talking about I'll just get a start here and, and I'm not going to show you grinding a blade when you're grinding a blade basically what you want to do is you want it to maintain the same uh, factory bevel as when the blade was brand new this, this is why it's handy to buy an extra set of blades not only because you're gonna need them eventually but it'll give you an idea of what bevel you're looking for because you pretty much want to maintain the factory uh, bevel. Uh, the other thing, don't try and go for perfection. Don't just take away metal just because there's a, a little chip out of it. A little gouge isn't going to hurt anything. Sharpen the blades and don't re just don't remove that metal trying to make, remove a nick. It, a nick is it's not going to hurt a thing and so I guess that's my advice there. You're sharpening the blade. You're not trying to make it perfect, I guess is what I'm saying. Um, no one can see it. All you have to do is have a reasonable uh, approximation of the factory bevel. You have to have them reasonably balanced. That's all you need to do. This does not have to be perfect. It's, it's on the bottom of a mower. It's underneath a mower. You don't have to go for perfection. If you try to make that so that's just one piece of flat metal, you're just gonna be taking off a lot of material. Um, there's your before and there's your after. That's just about all the better you have to do. The other thing, these do not have to be razor sharp. In fact, if you make them razor sharp, the first thing, no matter what you're gonna do, is you're gonna go out and hit a rock with them, right? But uh, they're razor sharp. You, they're gonna get folded over and they'll be worse than a dull blade. But as far as how sharp you get them, just look at a, at a brand new mower blade. This one's dusty, but it's brand new. Uh, it gives you an idea. I mean, they're not razor sharp when they're brand new. And they shouldn't be. So. Don't try to make your blades razor sharp. Just make them reasonably sharp. That's good enough for who it's for. All right, there you have it, sports fans. I spent probably somewhere between five and 10 minutes a piece on these blades. And you don't have to, like I said, you don't have to get them perfect. The, the bevel, you don't have to have just one bevel. I mean, it's nice. You can work on that as time goes on. You'll get better at it. This edge here, this doesn't have to be perfectly straight, nor does that. You just do the best you can. It's under a mower, for God's sake. No one's going to see it. You'll get better as time goes on. You basically want to have, though, a uniform bevel resembling the factory bevel and have them sharp, but not razor sharp. You don't even want to have them razor sharp. And uh, let's see. And then, of course, have them somewhat balanced. Check them out in balance. And uh, these ones were fairly in balance here. Let's see if I can... So she said something, it's fairly balanced, good enough for me. Um, it's not something you have to be perfect at, but it's something that you can get better as time goes on.